Breeze Patterns 9.6a. That means we have nine previous videos for Chapter 9, and you can find them in the description in the Geometry Playlist. A pattern has translation symmetry if it can be translated along a vector so that the image coincides with the pre-image. We talked about vectors in 8.6a and 8.6b. If you missed that and you don't understand vectors, you need to go back and watch those so you don't get more confused. A freeze pattern is a pattern that has translation symmetry along a line, like this little vector down here. See? So here we have an example of a freeze pattern. See how it's along a strip? And it's just translating and sliding along, isn't it? And look at this one. This one is translating, but it's also reflecting across this line. And we can see the length of the vector that it's translating. It's a design on a two-dimensional surface that's repetitive. A freeze group is the set of symmetries of a freeze pattern. It's the set of isometries of the pattern. We talked about isometries back in 4.1b. It's the geometric transformations built from rigid motions and reflections that preserve the pattern. So we have seven categories of freeze patterns. Our first one is a hop. So imagine hopping on one foot and you can see that the toes are pointing to the right. The arch is all on the same side. It's translations only. And this group is singly generated by a translation by the smallest distance over which the pattern is periodic. So we have a hop. It could also be a pattern like this, or if we had an F that just repeatedly hopped across. So it'd be something like this on a coordinate plane. It's just translating across. Our second category of freeze patterns is a step. We have glide reflections and translations, and this group is singly generated by a glide reflection, with translations being obtained by combining two glide reflections. So we can see on this one the toes are pointing to the right and the arch is here, and it translated and reflected to here, and translated and reflected to here, see? So it would be a pattern like this, or if we took the letter F, we could see it would look like this. And Actually, this, these would all be blue. I made some of them red so that you could easily see the reflection with your eyes. We talked about glide reflections back in video 9.4a a few videos ago. If you missed it, there's a link. You need to go back and watch it, okay? Our third category is a sidle. Sidle means to move sideways. We have vertical reflection lines and translations. And the group is the same as a non-trivial group in the one-dimensional case. It's generated by a translation and a reflection in the vertical axis. So we could see between this red one and this blue one our line of reflection, can't we? And here we have another one. Here the y-axis is a line of reflection. Here we have another one. Here we have another one. It would be a pattern like this, or it would be like this. That's a sidle. Our fourth category for freeze patterns would be a spinning hop. We have translations and 180 degree rotations. And this group is generated, generated by a translation and a 180 degree rotation. So if you look, our toes are pointing to the right and our arch is here, and now look, it reflected across, but it also rotated 180 degrees. So now the arch is still on the inside because it reflected, but now the toes are pointing to the left. We could take the letter S and put a line of reflection right through here, and we would see that not only did it reflect, but it also did a 180 degree rotation. So again, these would all be blue, but I made some of them red so that you could see the difference of what's happening when it translates and rotates, okay? For our fifth category, we have a spinning sidle. So remember, sidle means to move sideways. We have vertical reflection lines, glide reflections, translations, and 180 degree rotations. And the translations here arise from the glide reflections. So this group is generated by a glide reflection and either a rotation or a vertical reflection. So you can see what's happening with the arch here 
and the toes, it was reflected across, then it rotated 180 degrees, it reflected across, see? We've got a reflection and a rotation here, and then a reflection, so it'd be a pattern like this, but again, they would all be blue because they're just reflections of each other and rotations of each other. I made some of them red so that you could see them visually. It would be a pattern like this, or it would be like this with the letter V. Our sixth category of freeze patterns would be a jump. We have translations, horizontal reflections, glide reflections, and this group is generated by a translation and the reflection in the horizontal axis. And the glide reflection here arises as the composition of a translation and a horizontal reflection. So we can see a translation and a horizontal reflection. So our line of reflection would be right between the two feet, wouldn't it? So it'd be a pattern like this, or we could do the letter B, and we would have our line of reflection right through the center of the uppercase B. It would be like this, too. Our seventh category of freeze patterns is a spinning jump. We have horizontal and vertical reflection lines, translations, and 180 degree rotations. And this group requires three generators, with one generating set consisting of a translation, the reflection in the horizontal axis, and a reflection across a vertical axis. So here we have a reflection here, we have a reflection here, see? It would be a pattern like this, or if we had the letter H with the line of reflection going right through the center of the letter, it would be like this. When we're given a freeze pattern, we can assume that the pattern continues forever in both directions. Now here's some fun. We can accordion fold a strip of paper and count out a figure to form a freeze pattern with translation symmetry. We just fold it back and forth like an accordion, and once it's all folded on this surface, we can draw a little person, and we don't cut the tips of his hands and feet in this point, this point, this point, or this point. And by doing that on this surface, by leaving these uncut, that's gonna leave the fold there so when we unfold them, we'll have these little men holding hands, and we have a freeze pattern with translation symmetry. We can see the length of the translation vector goes from this tip to where it folds right there. We can also cut out half of a figure and see a repeated vertical reflection. So if we had our folded paper like this and drew only half of a man, we would be able to make this and we'd have a freeze pattern with translation symmetry. We can also see the length of the vector here. It goes from the middle of his body to the tip of his foot. Then it reflects and we get this. Then it reflects again and we get this. It reflects again, see? So a pattern has translation symmetry if it can be translated along a vector so that the image coincides with the pre-image. And again, if you missed out on vectors, there'll be links to 8.6a and 8.6b in the description so you can catch up and watch those. I'm also going to have a link to a Wikipedia article about freeze groups in the description if you'd like to read more about them and go a little bit more in depth. We can locate the reflection axis or point of rotation. And remember, a glide reflection, which we covered in 9.4a, is a composition of a translation and reflection across a line parallel to the translation vector. I have one more thing I want to show you real quick for the art students out there. Here's a picture of Native American pottery. You can actually see our freeze patterns here going around the pottery. 
Our next lesson is going to be about tessellations and classifying tessellations. That's going to be the second part of this lesson. It'll be 9.6b. Then we're going to talk about dilations, and then we're going to talk about if the order of transformations matter when we do two transformations before we move on to chapter 10. So I hope this video was helpful, and I hope you were able to gain something from it. Any confusion, make sure you go back and watch those videos if you've missed them, because you need to know about vectors and glide reflections to move on. And I hope you have a really great day, and I'll see you next time. Hit that like button for me. Bye.